This is John for MTG Nexus coming at you with some more Mono Red Incinerator Burn, which we worked on a little bit last night. As a friendly reminder, if you like Lightning Bolt, especially burn based content in any format, please consider subscribing to the channel. But mostly in Mar, we end up being the most informative red channel on YouTube for the modern format. And give us a follow here on Twitch. So, we played Mono Red Incinerator last night. Had some interesting parts to it. Uh, we went 4-1. Uh, I got a little bit lucky in some spots. I misplayed uh, pretty badly in our one loss to Four Color Death Shadow. Um, forgetting about creature type or card types and Harmagoyf causing some issues but uh, beyond that we changed up the list a little bit tonight uh, the main deck is primarily the same I have two copies of Shard Volley and one copy of Thunderous Wrath as opposed to three Shard Volley um, I'm not a huge fan of this card as it's kind of been documented and Thunderous Wrath I think is fine as a one of it's a card that you Unlike Chandra's Incinerator, you don't mind this card coming off, off the top and just doming your opponent for five out of nowhere. Uh, beyond that, you're running the four, full, four seal, the full four rift bolt to try to turn on Incinerator on turn two. You're running a bunch of efficient uh, burn spells, uh, seal of fire, lightning bolt, lava spike to turn on your uh, Incinerator as much as possible. Four copies of Monster Swiss Spear, four copies of Goblin Guide, round out your aggression suite, and then Skewer and Rift Bolt in addition to your four copies of Chandra's Incinerator. Uh, this card is a house when you get into play. Um, difficult to remove. There are some spells in the format, obviously, that deal with it. Edict Effects can deal with it. Uh, Assassin's Trophy and Path can deal with it. Ether Gust can deal with it. But beyond that, you know, things like Bolt, Push, etc. really struggle to deal with this particular card, Abrupt Decay. And then the sideboard, where we got some spice tonight. Um, the sideboard previously had three copies of Eidolon and the Great Rebel. I think Eidolon is potentially a fine card, um, but I think if you're going to go the route of not running Eidolon in the main deck anyway, I want to go with something a little bit more kind of uh, high variance, Leyline of Combustion, you know, this is a pretty decent card against Jund and such, uh, against the mirror matches. Anything that's trying to target you or target your things with spells, so the red mirror, um, etc. This is a card that I first, I think, saw being toyed with by Poseidon. I've seen a few other people mess with it here and there. We've tried it once or twice in leagues. It's been fine. Um, obviously, you want to see it in your opening hand. It's not a good top deck, generally. Uh, beyond that, two copies of Blood Moon because you are mo running Mono Red, and this is a card you can bring in quite easily against something like Eldrazi Tron. Four copies of Smash the Certain Marines because this deck is especially weak to Chalice on one. Other two copies of Skullcrack for some life gain shenanigans. Two copies of Dragon's Claw for the mirror matches and uh, Prowess. And then two copies of Tormont's Crypt just to have a little bit of interaction for any type of graveyard stuff. Whether it be Dredge, Urodex, potentially, etc. So, that said, let's get us rolling in this league. Mm. Alright. Turn. And Hayashi still turning up, it looks like. Really, Ghost? <laughs> oh, jeez. 
Do, do, do. All right, so our opponent is on mill, but this hand isn't particularly good in that matchup, so I'm going to go ahead and mulligan. I would normally mulligan, but this is a hand I'm going to keep pretending as if I didn't know what my opponent was on. That way we're not using um, unfair information here. So... Uh. All right, so lead off on see the fire here, pass turn. Okay, opponent is on mill, but we kept a hand deliberately. We're gonna have crabs, potentially crab here. Do to do. Well, it's got crabs. Goblin guy showing up right on time, friendo. Pass turn. Got here. Merrick Orb. Goop. Roll us for two. Got one guide. Goblin God's probably dead next turn. I'm going to cast Skewer since it's the hardest card theoretically to turn on in our deck. Fast turn. Hmm. Okay. I don't have a black source? Ooh, that's rough. Another Mars Merrick Oro on top. Oh boy. Okay, do this. Do this. Actually, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. To the one. Well, basically a one. Post board, he will have some other stuff against us, but <laughs> ouch.
get to finish this off. All right. It's been a while since I've played against Mill. Um, Ley lines are going to be pretty rough for him if we start with them. Our deck is a bit vulnerable to Blood Moon. Probably don't want these Searing Blazes. The only thing they kill generally in a Mill deck is Crabs. And then... Some number of skull cracks are probably fine. Don't know how many we actually want to actively have. Because they do run typically crypt incursions, and some versions run cling to dust as ways to gain life. So. Huh. We'll go like this game one game two. Keeping in mind that something like Mesmeric Orb is not targeted, so that would not trigger Combustion, but most of their, his other spells are going to trigger Combustion, should we have it in our opener. Yeah, kind of rough for them, but I think we open on this one. Thunderous Wrath obviously is a dead card, but this card's going to... Uh, hurt a lot. Kind of funny, right? Like one time we draw uh, we have the push. Push it, push it good. I don't have a drone lock. There's no push. Looks like no push. Okay. So we basically have two mulligans in our hand currently. Thunderous Wrath we're never going to cast, and the Chandra's Incinerator is a card we potentially may not cast. We know they have the Drown and Lock, so I think I'm just going to play Swift Spear and Seal of Fire here to avoid putting cards in my graveyard for Drown and Lock. And this could potentially set up a turn three incinerator. I think his deck might be ill equipped to deal with. Echoing truth. Sure. Trigger. Reveal cling to dust. Alright, it's gonna be a rough one to fight through. This another drone lock. Once again, they can't counter this, but they can now kill one of our get me a leak. Sure, kind of unfortunate. Means we can't trigger incinerator this turn.
Yeah, our hand right now has complete garbage with the combustion being bounced to our hand and the thunderous wrath and incinerator being pretty difficult to cast. They have a fatal push here. Nope. Okay. Being cognizant of something like Blood Moon, so maybe we board those out for game number three if there is one. Um. And then cling in our cling here. Yep. No skull crack for us. Okay. Well, we are in some trouble now. My hand is a complete pile of garbage. Our corpse fine. Let's do the thing here, see if we hit another land or something. Okay, play seal of fire while they're tapped out. Once again, we know they have at least one drown in the lock. Ether Gust is a little rough, unfortunately. Bang. Hand is Ether Mesmeric Orb and Ether Gust. Once again, I didn't mulligan to a hand game one knowing what he was on, because that's really not fair. Uh, he's a streamer that gave us a, uh, a raid last week, I think. And I've been kind of bopping into his stream, usually before our stream goes live. So... This hand is a bit questionable on the draw. I'm more likely to keep these one landers, and I think we can deploy all of our spells, so I'm going to keep it, but once again. It's possible I'm supposed to be more aggressive with my mulligans on one landers here. Goblins. Okay. Not exactly the best hand to leverage against goblins, but it's not the worst either. This might be the only damage our Swiss Spear gets through for this game. Depending on what their hand is. Snoop D O double G. Yep. Holding up 
Bolt here. Kill Snoop Dogg. Don't want them to be able to flash that off the top of their deck. It's possible I'm supposed to suspend a rough bolt here, but I do want to kind of potentially screw up their math. Okay, looks like they're just going to play another Snoop. Okay. You don't have another land, do you? Interesting. It's again because we're so kind of chocked full of spells here. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. I'm doing alright, War Dog. How are you? Well, that's good. A little disappointed in the last couple of nights' streams, but, you know, is what it is. We had that huge stream the other night, and the last couple of nights have just been kind of like, I don't know, two, three, four people the entire night, so it's just kind of... Like, get last night, I think I went the entire stream without a single chatter, so... Kind of discouraging in some regards. I did get started later last night, and I did get started a little bit earlier tonight, but still, it's just like, okay. <laughs> so, Warchief? Mm, Warchief or Matron? Sling Gang? Okay. Yeah, like we had two nights in a row where we had like I don't know, ten ten plus viewers for a good bit of the stream and then like last night and tonight is just like I don't know if it's just different audiences on different nights, different streamers are streaming. Not quite sure on that one. Maybe it's because I'm streaming Mono Red Incinerator instead of Boros Burn. I get the feeling part of it might be uh, Pioneers making a comeback, so that's kind of the new hot toy right now. Uh, Alright, so Goblins... Goblins is a weird one, right? So, the combo involves them uh, killing us by targeting it correctly. Let me look up Sling Gang. I believe it says target. So, Game Lieutenant. Target, yep. Okay. So, Ley Line of Combustion is pretty brutal against that. Dragon's Claw, 
eh, we're kind of the controlled, or we're more the aggressive deck. So, I think we want some amount of smashes, mainly for Chalice, because some of the Goblins decks do, do have Chalice. Uh, Skullcrack's very inefficient at trying to answer what they're doing. And then, maybe we cut a skewer. Yeah, tonight's list is just freaking crazy. Like, the list I had last night was very similar. I think the only change I made to the main deck is I added a Thunderous Wrath. Um, this hand isn't, like, ideal, but I think it's fine. Turn 1, Seal of Fire. Turn 2, Searing Blaze something. So... Sure, Ether Vile is annoying, but it's whatever. Oh, Swisher is pretty draw. Everything is made better by a one turn one one drop creature. Especially when your opponent taps out for a vial. Yeah, I think. Um, as far as content, I'm going to try to focus on red decks in every format, pretty much. What would they be trying to... Uh, is this a uh, ma... Ba, 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 the Edict one? I think there's a goblin that forces an Edict. Warren's weirding, maybe? Or is this a collective? Or, no, this isn't collective brutality because they tap for goblin stuff. No, this is a brutality. This is definitely a brutality. I think they're debating what to pitch. Which brutality isn't great for the home team, but it's also kind of whatever. Like, they're not putting pressure on the board, so Brutality is kind of... They're trading resources for other resources. Probably got to take Searing Blaze here. Blaze is the best card in this hand by far. Yeah. I forgot to open the Excel sheet here. Whoopsie. Yeah, hopefully it comes up on the right screen, but it doesn't look like it's going to. Nopers. Data over here. Uh, no. Okay, now we're against goblins. We just want to get relevant spells out of our hand. Play the Seal of Fire on one, and then kind of go from there. <laughs> Fake out. <laughs> I appreciate opponents who use their vials even when they don't necessarily have something to vial in. Just to see if we'd flinch. Double Brutality is kind of okay-ish, I guess. They might have been trying to set up the combo here. But it does put us a long way from killing them, which was kind of obnoxious. Well, hello there. It's gonna kind of suck to spend our whole turn doing that next turn, but that does at least keep the combo kill from killing us. Well, 
Well, that's a slight difference, right? Like, humans is a slightly different animal. So, I still think we have to kill this, right? But I'm going to kill it with a bolt instead. So we have still have our onboard answer to another another Snoop Dogg. Which they could easily cast next turn. So this shuts down the combo um, to a certain degree. It means they have to have double the life total of what they're trying to kill us from. So currently they would have to have a life total of 11 to kill us. Which obviously not too spectacular, but it, it is something to note. Because the way their, their combo sets up, they create infinite copies of Snoop, and then use Sling Gang to copy that infinitely, and then fire them off one at a time. Well, while they're gaining a life per cycle, they'd be taking two damage per cycle. So, it, if we could have dealt them more damage, this would be much more effective stopping the combo. Here, if they're smart, they probably just grab either Snoop or Sling Gang. Ringleader, okay. So they're just going for the alternative game plan here. Um, just have all the tutors in the world. Well, here is my six six. My six six is amazing. You never seen Leyline of Combustion before? I busted it out once or twice. I think this is another one of those. Uh, Things Besiden talked about working with. Yep, ringleader. So they're probably looking for a. They found a Snoop and a Sling Gang. Okay. Snoop Dog a Dog. Bow wow yow yippee yo yippee yo. Bow wow wow yippee yo yippee yo. Hey, Abyssius, how are you doing? And ironically, it backdoor stops the goblins combo. Sort of. Could we do something besides drawing lands? That'd be great. Well, I, I guess that means my seal of approval. Hey, Ghost. It's an awful early stream ending for you, isn't it? Thanks for the raid, though, bud. I'm gonna say, Ghost, don't you usually run to like two or three? Yeah, I respect that. I understand. I usually got to be up around 11 for work myself. That was a rough... Did you win your last match? Oh, that's rough. The... 
Yeah, well, to be fair, this matchup isn't exactly your your best matchup in the world either. Munitions expert, huh? Hmm. I want to see if we can get them to kind of... is they're just going to do, do, do. beat us down instead of trying to combo kill us I'll try we're up a game this match but I'm not not liking our odds this game So opponent has a sling gang in hand, they have a chalice on top. Incinerator gave us at least a somewhat back doorway to potentially win here. I guess the only card in our deck that would bail us right now would be our one of Thunderous Wrath, would be quite nice. Ability, just not to use ability. Chalice on one makes sense. Yep. Well, we won game one. Game two, we were on the draw here and kept a somewhat mediocre hand. Drew the ley line kind of middle of the road. And smashed the smithereens. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not going to show them the smash. I'm sure they could presume it's there, but we could put them to one, but one's not good enough. The double brutality just stripped us of enough resources. Now that we've seen the chalice, do I want to bring in the third copy of Smash? Smash is, eh. Smash is either a 10 or a 0 in this matchup. I guess it can hit Bile in some spots, but I don't know how much the fight needs to be about that. I still think we want to bring in the third copy. Maybe go down Lava Spike, since it doesn't interact with the board. Look, once again, Leyline is in because it messes with the combo just enough to allow us to leverage a win and it's not impossible for us to cast it the problem with the goblins matchup is goblins already has a pretty reasonable matchup against us and then gets to bring in additional cards like collective brutality uh potentially other stuff we're pretty good usually at the stopping their combo but they are pretty good at um, leveraging other effects to beat us because that was always like um, the problem with the goblins matchup even before snoop combo was printed the, the few times the deck would pop up it was a rough matchup um, so if they have Brutality, we're pretty skewered here, no pun intended, but not really a whole lot I can do. 
Can't hold up Searing Blaze without fetch lands in the deck, so this is a main phase card only. We haven't played any creatures yet, and then obviously Brutality with all the lands we've been giving them is just going to be... Okay, we don't have Brutality here. Interesting. Yeah, Snoop's fine. The mountain on top. So we know we're going to continue to feed them. Ugh. Well. Still think we gotta do it. Incinerator can make a very terrible top deck in a lot of spots. At least they can't vial in tar fire here. <laughs> Once again, a random one of Thunderous Wrath could finish off this game. Okay. Matron. Go grab. Snoop, or are you going to go grab? Yep, yeah, going to go grab Snoop. So once again, putting us to the test. Yeah, they're running at least one tar fire. We saw that last game. Thunderous Wrath, please. Mountain. So a lot of it depends on if they have Harbinger in hand, if we're dead next turn. There's a good chance we are, but... Okay, War Marshal. Presuming you're blocking here, or you're violating in a... I'd be very happy if you violated in a... Whatchamacallit? Uh, munitions Expert. Yeah, see, I'm very happy you're violing this in, because this means you have to have uh, both war. You'd have to have War Chief, Snoop, and Harbinger. I don't think you can cast all those in one turn. So, I honestly think they would have been better off violing in Snoop and trying to combo us. But then maybe they don't have Harbinger, so maybe that's just irrelevant. They have Sling Gang, obviously we're in trouble, but, you know, we can't really stop Sling Gang. Chalice would also be brutal. It looks like you're just casting Snoop Doggy Dog. Okay. Well, uh... Yeah. Survey says we need to draw well here. Okay, Goblin Guide is definitely not a good draw. Rift Bolt. Bolt's okay. Um. Scale of one to dead, how dead are we? Start by ta tagging that first. Okay. 
Ja. Ja. Okay, I'm not sure what our opponent was tanking on in that one. Yeah, that's that's a that's a pretty good one. All right, because with the sling getting on top, they can just chuck random goblins at us enough to get out of any type of burn spells we can do. So, goblins be goblin, really. <laughs> Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? Those of you coming over from Ghost's stream, as well as our normal viewers. I want to thank everybody for sticking around hanging around tonight. We are playing some Mono Red Incinerator, a deck that I played some last night. We went 4-1 in a league with a slightly different build. That version had three Shard Volley in the main deck. Um, I cut that down to... Uh, two, and put in a Thunderous Wrath, just as a random fun of. And then the deck was running, I uh, won against Ghost. He was on Mill. Which is kind of a good matchup for Burn decks. So we're on the play... Three lander with a goblin guide, pretty decent. Definitely keep. With burn hands, you usually evaluate the number of lands in hand, and uh, your best burn burn hands always involve a one drop creature, whether it be goblin guide or monster swift spear, especially on the play because you know it's going to get in for damage. Field of ruin, uh, some type of control deck probably. There aren't too many aggro decks that can really afford to play Field of Ruin. Yep. Hopefully it's just blue-white, but we're up against Jess Guy. This could be a rough go. I did watch his stream before, or like literally right before I logged or I started streaming. I was watching his stream. I really wasn't expecting to queue into him because I thought he was still in the middle of his match. So I was kind of like, oh crap. Um, huh. Not cool. So I deliberately kept a hand in game one that wasn't slanted towards Mill. I didn't have a one drop creature and I kept a Searing Blaze, which is generally pretty bad against Mill. But he happened to have the Crab on one and it just kind of fed into what my hand was doing. So, like, I literally kept a five burn spell hand, which generally is an okay burn hand, but not great. So. Field of Ruin. So our opponent, actually, no, what did they do with their opt? They put the card on bottom, and they had fetched anyway, so we don't know if they have a mana leak or something in hand. If they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. It's kind of whatever here. I'm going to do this. Okay. Um, some people refer to this as easy mode. They're going to mana leak this instead. Sure means I just get to... I don't think this is quite lethal, but I think it's quite a lot of damage. Actually, is this... Yeah, this is lethal on turn 3, right? It's in the 5, and then the creatures are lethal. Yeah, I know, but I also, I'm one of those people that I really despise people that stream snipe, so I 
try to set aside any pre-existing knowledge I have of Magic Online. Now, on paper, I'll certainly go around and scout people's decks and see what people are doing. You know, if you're playing a control deck or a Jun deck, and I'm playing a burn deck, and I finish my match in 10, mi 10 minutes and have the ability to go around and check to see what you're doing, I'm going to go ahead and check and see what you're doing. You know, I'm not going to give up that free, you know... I don't really like Shard Volley against blue decks in general, just because of the payoff that you have to give up. So we're up against blue-white control. I don't care... Okay, if people are that desperate they have to stream snipe me, then it's kind of whatever. Um, you know, mo as a content creator, now obviously I'm not in the same league as Ghost, so I'm not making, like, whatever he makes, but from most of my stuff from, uh, creation, I normally get from my YouTube revenue, because I'm a far larger on YouTube than I am here on Twitch. Uh, do we want that Blood Moon? I feel like one Blood Moon isn't terrible. I might just go back to the Shard Volleys, even though they're kind of whatever. Leyline of Combustion doesn't feel like a great card against them. Because they're not, like, targeting a bunch of stuff. They're more playing with uh, um, counter spells than removal spells. So. But, like, most of my... I don't play a lot of big events... I don't play a lot of big events, so I'm not, like, worried about stream sniping. And when I'm playing a big event, I don't actually stream. So it's it's harder for me to get stream sniped. But I do get what you're saying. Astol Sarah. Astol. Sand's pretty good. Um, it does have the issue of being vulnerable to something like timely reinforcements. And we're still not sure if our opponent's splashing a color or... Eh, well, hand just got worse. But, uh, like this goblin guy has to do a lot of work. Snapcaster Beach. Curious if they fetch a. Okay, so it looks like they're just blue white. They could be blue white sharp blade, or they could just be blue white control. One of the problems with being your opponent on turn three is sometimes you don't see their whole deck, so you're kind of working with limited information. I know burn problems, right? But you know that is one thing with beating our opponent as kind of ruthlessly as we did is they just uh... okay there's a purge they have a path ether gust bottom um... sharks where did you get the shark emojis? It's again main phasing these because they're unlikely to use force of negation at that point anyway. Oh, they kept a two lander. Cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Just playing a naked snapcaster mage here. Nope, cycling a shark typhoon. We still don't know because the blue white decks are running typhoon either way, so we still aren't like getting good information here one way or the other. Cut all the cool toys.
No, Foss has all the foil toys. <laughs> Given as many uh, secret lair stuff as he sends me, Foss literally has all the cool toys. Like, there are times I wonder if he craps foil bags. <laughs> Picked up Lurus and Bobbles tonight. That's cool. Is your LGS open? I don't think my LGS is running events. So, one of the downsides of this style of burn deck is there's a lot less instant speed play with it. So, it's a lot harder for me to leverage... Um, we're flooding pretty hard here. Do they have a purge in their hand? Fortunately, their field of ruin can't fix their mana. Gotcha. I don't even think my store is running them unofficially. Of course, I'm never off on Friday nights, so it doesn't particularly matter. Monastery Mentor. Okay. Seen this more and more out of the blue deck. It could very easily have Force of Negacion. Alright, well, uh... So... Force of Negation is going to have to be spent saving their live. Yeah, this hesitation tells me all I need to know. They have a Force of Negation. Gonna say, you think that long, you clearly have a Force of Negation, and they pitch a Teferi. Alright, so... That one's going face. And this one is going to kill your monsters. Let's enter here. If they have... Opt, we're gonna feel really bad, but otherwise, I think we just gotta kill that there. Yes, it leaves us empty handed, but you know, a lot harder them, for them to kill us with a 1 1 monk than it is a 2 1 that can just keep playing more and more and more and more dudes to the board. So, alright, well, um, this is probably getting. This is just going to immediately get uh, Celestial purged, so we're not really accomplishing a whole lot by playing this, but yeah, it is what it is. Yep. Probably should probably actually do this on their main phase, but get an extra damage in with the prowess creature, but things and stuff for 100, Alex. So one of the cards that are likely it's in their hand is probably Cryptic Command, the way they were debating whether to play that or not. Uh, yeah, we're not in a hurry. Once again, that one of Thunderous Wrath is still working as a one-hit one KO. Makes me almost want to run, too. It's kind of freaking crazy. Alright, so our opponent's got uh, access to uh, whatever they want here, basically. Two cards in hand. What should I play around, or should I just go for the kill here? Uh, if they have any type of cantrip, they can draw whatever spell they want. If they have Cryptic Command, they can... Two, three, four. They can pretty easily cryptic into purge. So I'm just going to go ahead and attack, force them to make the decision outside of that. Alright, so they just had path, so it really didn't matter what we did here. 
So with only one card in hand, I am actually going to go ahead and chart our uh, lava spike them. If they have a cryptic, they have a cryptic. Ether gust. This is one of the downsides of the evolution of Burn is Burn has gotten a lot better, a lot worse at playing instant speed games against control because so many more of their spells are uh, Okay, so now they can they tick up or do they put a spell on top? I feel like you put a force of negation on top just to cover you. Uh, I really don't know that Ramanop is better than the uh, Canopy Lands. I know I got into one situation where I drew like with Prowess I drew like an absurd amount of lands but then again we were so late in the game and I think I had 18 cards left in my library and somebody made a comment about it. I was just like, yeah, maybe I should just sideboard some Valakids. It should be. But it looks like they're just going to do nothing instead. They know we can't kill them because our spell on top is Lava Spike. So... It's still dangerous because um, they know they're going to two here. And a card I used to like to run in these kind of decks was uh, I used to like to run the card Exquisite Firecraft. This was back before Ether Gust was printed, though, and that was a card that could like. The control decks would specifically try to hold on to their counter spells until that last spell, only to find out that they couldn't counter the last spell. So, okay, they're main phasing. Question is, what do they put on top? Putting Ether Gust. All right, so Ether Gust is going to cover them against almost everything. They're going to draw the Ether Gust. But you're seeing here why killing that. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to pass. That's a bait spell for next turn. Now, obviously, if our opponent's drawn more counter spells, that's that's like the worst case scenario. Pretty much game over. Though I don't necessarily like playing it when they did. Huh. Uh. Yeah, Incinerator's actually pretty bad here. I normally like to ward Incinerator out against blue decks, but this configuration doesn't really have enough stuff in it. I'm showing the blood moon here. We'll bottom it off the ether gust.
Or if they're smart, they could just literally bounce it with Teferi. That's the thing, man, about blue mages sometimes, is they just think way too long about everything. It's like, this card doesn't matter. You have Teferi, you can bounce it. You have an Aether Gust, you can put it to the bottom if you really care. You could fetch, put another uh, Mystic Sanctuary on top, which is look like what they're going to do. Um, pull a Celestial Purge on the top of your deck and deal with it. Like, this is just, like, way too much thinking. Alright, sure. So now, Blood Moon will be in their mind. We're still bringing in the second Blood Moon on the play. Um... So once again, I really hate these incinerators against decks with Path, Purge, and whatnot. <clears throat> but is Leyline of Combustion more reasonable than Chandra's Incinerator? I don't think so. Like I said, they do have some, like... Incinerator is one of those cards. Yeah, you haven't had a chance to see last night's league. <laughs> uh, yeah, Incinerator obliterated last night. It wasn't even pretty. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree that there is consistency issues with it. I'm not going to sit here and claim there aren't. There, there are definitely some consistency issues. And the higher... The higher the density of blue, white X decks in the format, the worse the card is. Um, this hand is a gamble. One lander. I don't like keeping one land hands, but against a deck whose primary removal spell is still Path to Exile even post board, I'm much more willing to keep a one land hand. So, this can't. Like I said, this hand's a gamble. It has a very high upside if we draw lands, and a very high upside if our opponent passes us. But they're going to realize pretty quickly we're stuck on one land, and they might not. So, all right. So that looks like we're going to get path here. Because you generally don't shock in against blue, mono blue, or mono red. Yep. The downside of the mono red version is we don't have the ability to put our life total below, uh, our opponents, so a timely reinforcements on three is going to be really devastating, but we can't play around that without a skull crack effect. So put the metal pedal to the metal and hope it's good enough here. Or they just have another path to exile? Sure. Or, yeah, that strikes me as they don't have, uh, what should I call it? Goblin Guide's a pretty nice one here. I wonder if they're thinking about ether gusting this. Trigger me this. Monastery Mentor. See, I'm not downplaying how much you have to think as a control deck, but it sometimes it's just like, you think a little too much, friend. You think a little too much. Yeah, 
Yeah, why... If you know you're playing timely reinforcements, why do you take 12 minutes to decide what you're going to do? One short of killing them. Rough. I say our opponent really wants to establish that monster mentor but that seal of fire is really kind of checking them which is kind of hilarious you have cryptic you have cryptic let's go to combat interesting snap path obviously would be annoying here there's path to exile Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think they're also realizing it might be a bad idea. Oh, shark for one. Okay. So they get to draw the path to exile. Makes sense. Yeah, unfortunately it doesn't matter when you get hit with double timely reinforcements. Does not matter when you get hit with double timely.
See, that's the one thing. Uh, back when Space Marine was around, he was always kvitching about control, and they never have tools, and this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, the thing is, blue-white versus burn was always a interesting matchup if the blue-white control deck wanted to beat burn and you know having multiple timely reinforcements you know it's really hard for burn to beat that so is what it is since fine it's a little bit awkward with the the spells but with swift spear here obviously this hands a keep That's the thing about the configuration of Blue White X now, with especially access to multiple mystical sanctuaries. You know, you're going to see the same timely reinforcements two, three, four times, and that's just basically impossible to beat. And then you just, the Bant and the Soul Tiver, they just have Uro, which is timely reinforcements on crack. Yeah. Obviously, Swifty was created long before they thought of Wizards Lightning, so. But it was created in the same set as uh, Manus Rider, wasn't it? So. Yeah, that's been the one part about this league that's been kind of eye-opening, right? Is these blazes are just kind of chilling around and doing not a whole lot a lot of the times. Hoping our opponent... Am I about to get Trinisphered? I'm about to get Karned. Okay. So, hopefully they don't have liquid metal coating. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I've played some uh, Wizards in Historic... Or actually, I think it was in... Might have been in Mo in uh, Standard, actually. When it was still a, still a thing in the Standard format. Lands are good draws here. Spells are good draws. So Ape Guard, they can at least cast Spyro here. So it looks like they're going to do pitching a card, making a dude. Blood Moon. <laughs> yeah, Blood Moon ain't particularly good here, is it? Do this to get some damage through. Don't think they were dead there, but, you know. I'm not going to <clears throat> 
So is unfortunately Dragon Boy isn't um It's a fairy dragon, right? It's not a wizard. It's not a wizard, Harry. So get these searing blazes likely out of our deck. Um Obviously, Blood Moon isn't particularly good. Smashes have a lot of targets against their deck because they're a Karn based deck. They also have Chalice. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Definitely getting these three out. And the question is I guess we bring in a. No, we have one more to cut. So, Shard Volley? I feel like this is a Shard Volley. Began the car game with seven cards in hand, and this hand is really, really good, but really, really vulnerable to a chalice. So I think I'm gonna have to mulligan, unfortunately. This hand is fine because we get to put the thunderous wrath back on the bottom. So we know if we go 60, 60 minutes or 60 cards deep. Our final card will be a miracle. But I'm guessing we're getting Chalice on one. Yep. It's a real shocker. It's a real shocker. It's so much better game one than it is game two against Burn. Just saying. Scribe to the top and the bottom. Last turn. We have a Chandra here. Selfron Void. Unfortunately, we're going to have to spend a bunch of resources killing Chandra next turn. Just because. Because, because, because. Because of the wonderful things it does. So. Lava spike your face. Thanks, Lucarian. How are you doing? Another Chandra. Yep. Okay. Wow, oh, adding two mana. Okay. Yep. Karn coming down the mountain, so we're probably, probably done here. Well, even flipping the Wrath only, well, yeah, I guess flipping Wrath is, is indeed an out that we have here. But then they could just go and grab, uh, Ensnaring Bridge. You're thinking way too much into that. War Dog, have you been drinking? <laughs> or are you just trying to think too logically this time of night? That's rough.
really bad. We're going to lose to the Shonder most likely. We did put Wrath on the bottom, so yeah, we don't even have that out. Maze Mind Tome. I guess there's an outside shot we could beat a Chandra Emblem. I don't think we can. So I'm going to have to go after Chandra here. We're going to have a Spyro next turn. Yep, I'm just going to draw a card with a Tome. <laughs> Fair enough. I find some people try to think way too much when they're drunk or drinking. Sometimes it's the time only. <laughs> oh, dang. Well, that was like our one shot, our one opportunity. Now they dragon clawed us. Bill can big big mama deal with your I guess if anything gives us a chance it's big mama hello mama huh um well, I'm going to say that's definitely a way to deal with Incinerator. <laughs> the awkward, I didn't play my land. Oops. <laughs> they have another one in hand anyway. Uh oh, they just have bridge. Uh, come on. Smash one time. Not smash. Alright. An interesting league so far. We want the skull cracks in just as a hedge against um Yeah, like that wasn't even necessarily the only issue there, but it's certainly a card that could cause us problems. Uh, we played against... Ghost, who raided us earlier on Mill, we played Goblins and Blue White Control. Unfortunately, our only win so far has been against Ghost. Um. This hand's a gamble. I think we keep it, but this hand's definitely a gamble. Very vulnerable to Chalice on one and really needs to draw a second land. But I think it does put up quite a bit of pressure. Which 
Gemstone caverns is scary. Okay. Come on, little goblin guide, you can get us across the finish line. Chalice? Yep, looks like a chalice. Okay. Naturally, we draw the the land that we wanted. Um, unfortunately, they have turn one chalice. Oh, so, need to draw one of our four smashes, but there's so many targets. Fortunately, our opponent looks like they kept a two lander. Thing. This is a magical card. <laughs> Box pasta. Uh, they have a... Okay, there's the Maze Mind Tome. I think we knew about Maze Mind Tome already, though. Somebody hand me a Smash to Smithereens, please. I said smash the smithereens, not another one drop. So the problem is like Maze Mind Tome's life gain, Dragon's Claw's life gain. Staring bridge is annoying. collection so they've been sitting on that Simeon spirit guide for some time <laughs> good said you won in the mail I have it in paper I'm talking about I need to draw it Chihuahua. Indeed, indeed. Like, I understand being deliberate, but it's like you have a couple lines of play, make the play. No, 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 they would be very much dead without that chalice. If we don't draw it this turn, we're basically dead. Well, I mean, it's at least an out, right? Fortunately, they're drawing a Chandra, which means we need to rip a land next turn. Yeah, 
Yeah, the problem is, is that Chandra, if they played, it's going to throw the math off. Oh, no. Uh, especially if they kill the... Chandra will put them to five. Smash will put them to six. Back to three. If they kill... The guide, then we need to draw a land to win. Okay. They chose poorly. Oh my lord. I just punted it away so it really doesn't matter. Oh my lord. No, I'm not drunk. I just pointed at the wrong thing. This game should be over. Instead, it's probably over the other way. Six. Vandal Blast. <laughs> oh. Where did the Torture Defiance go that they had? That's a uh, heck of a draw.
Yeah, so it's pointing at the chalice that our opponent had on the battlefield when we have a handful of ones as opposed to killing their dragon's claw. Yeah. <laughs> That was one of those whoopsies. Oh, oh, magic sometimes. Yeah, I'm aware of what by force is. I think I'd play shattering spree over by force, but they do roughly the same thing. But that was just a matter of I drew the top deck I needed. Yeah. It's a X and one red destroy X turret artifacts. I'm not just some simple burn player. I've played a lot of other decks. I'm aware of a lot of other cards. <laughs> but I appreciate the suggestion. Uh, you know, we're on the play. Seems good. Shard Volley Hype. I guess. It's been a pretty miserable week. I should be two and two, but I'm one and three because I, uh, well, I might have punted a little bit last game. Just, just, just a little bit. City of Brass. Okay, one four confirmed. Cool. Oh no, I understand. So for those of you that don't understand why I've said 1-4 uh, confirmed, we're up against uh, Ad Nauseam, which is a rather terrible matchup for Burn, especially when it looks like they're going to have the entire combo set up here. That said, us being on the play here is pretty nice, but having double Searing Blaze is pretty bad. The only way this is good is if they had Thassa's Oracle as a defender, and we happen to draw a third land. Even in the sideboard, we don't have a ton for them. Well, actually, we have Blood Boons and we have Smashes, which are all reasonable cards. Um, this is another one of those matchups where Chandra's Incinerator is actively terrible because uh, Ad Nauseam decks are usually packing four copies of uh, Leeline of Sanctity in the sideboard. So I'm going to hold that land in hand. Probably handing them two lands. Yep. Holy angels graces. Uh, yeah. That's going to be hard to fight through. That said... If they don't have Phyrexian on life here, they're going to have to Angel's Grace next turn. And they haven't shown any fast manning yet. 
so okay this looks like it's a uh, pentad prism yep they have another land yeah we know they have another land because they have city of brass so we could be dead next turn but this at least forces them to skull crack Lotus Bloom, Lotus Bloom, Lotus Bloom. Yep. Grace, they go to three. And then on tap and kill us, presumably. Once again, holding a land in hand in case they have Doss's Oracle as a defender, which I doubt, but. Still the high percentage play. So they have Spirit God in hand. Yep. It does not. I don't know if it gets around the damage for or the life total to one clause, but it does not prevent. Uh, <clears throat> it does. It keeps you from dying that turn. So. Okay, so they've got. They're going for the Thassa's Oracle win rather than the Lightning Storm win. Just fine with all the pact negations they have in hand. But I probably would have just gone for the lightning storm win. Alright, Blood Moons can mess with their mana a little bit and Smashes are fine. Problem is, like, we gotta get these Cern Blazes out of our deck. These Incinerators are terrible unless they don't have Leyline. Um, skull Cracks don't really do a whole lot. Hmm. But yeah, I, I honestly consider Ad Nauseam probably Burns' worst or second worst matchup overall. Outside of like random nonsense like Martyr, Martyr Proc or Soul Sisters. Yeah, I didn't think it was. I mean, we gotta keep this hand. If they have Leyline, they have Leyline. And we start bolting ourselves. Yep, they're gonna have. Okay, no line. line. Alright. So, you're saying there's a chance. Not really. A nauseam player keeps seven card hands. You're usually, usually pretty toast as a burn player. Means they're probably on a Lotus Bloom hand. Because they generally don't like City of Brass being their first land. No fast mana. Interesting. So that must mean Pentad Prism. Which means if we rip a 
We rip a smash to smithereens next turn, we could be in good shape. Or even a blood moon. They really keep a one lander? I don't know. The templating on some of that, uh, Time spiral stuff was weird. And I believe Angel's Grace is from Time Spiral Block because of the split second mechanic. Hello there. Hello, incinerator, my old friend. I don't think you're going to be enough to kill through a pentat, or whatchamacallit, though. Probably have to have a, uh, Phyrexian on life, right? There's no way you could have kept that slow of a hand without... You kept the hand on three... Okay, there's a Pentad Prism. Nope, that's a Phyrexian on life. Okay. Really want to find a burn spell to... Those of you that wonder why I didn't attack with Swift Spear, it doesn't make a bit of difference this turn. We're going to be just short. Okay. Not only Tribal, it also brought the card Planeswalker. Okay. Yep, kind of summates this league. So once again, should have been two and three, but I punted against prison. Um, the rest of the league was just kind of nonsense. Uh, Mill obviously is a pretty good matchup for burn and almost any type of burn variant. Um, goblins as a close matchup, but tends to be at least slightly flavor favorable for goblins because not only do they have 
a infinite combo, but they also have uh, their fair game plans pretty good against us. Blue white control. We saw a whole lot of timely reinforcements and not a whole lot of skull cracks in the post board games. Mono Red Prison, once again, we should have beaten them game three because we top decked the Smash to Smithereens, but I spaced and clicked on their Dragon's Claw rather than their Chalice of the Void, which led to us losing the game. And then Ad Nauseam is one of Burn's worst matchups because Ad Nauseam is a roughly turn four combo deck that has three different elements of attack against Burn. It has Angel's Grace, it has Phyrexian on Life, which basically buys them an extra 10 plus life, and it also has Leyline of Sanctity on the sideboard. So if you're not packing Disruptive Revelries, or Wear Tears, or Disenchants, you're really at a disadvantage in that matchup, and even with those cards, you're in pretty bad shape. And also, that happens to be one of the matchups where Eidolon of the Great Revel, which was originally in this build in the sideboard, uh, the second league here, I was running Leyline of Combustion instead. Um, that's another matchup where Eidolon would have been excellent. Um, if we had an Eidolon in play as opposed to a Chandra's Incinerator, our opponent would have been a lot harder pressed to actually combo through like they did because 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, yeah they would have died in response to the um, uh, Thassa's Oracle there game 2, but I still think we would have been hard pressed to win game 3. And then, yeah. Mono Red, obviously, you're giving up the ability to interact with enchantments. And, you know, one of one of the downsides of the Incinerator builds is they are inherently more volatile. And, you know, we played this one, Cheeky Thunderous Wrath, and it was kind of a dead card in one hand. But, you know, it's fine. Like, you're not going to draw it in your opener all that much. And then any time after your turn one draw, it's usually pretty good. So... I think a cheeky one of is fine with this. But the rest of the deck, like last night we went 4-1, could have gone 5-0. And then tonight we could have been easily 2-3, or we should have been 2-3. And it's just a lot about the matchups with this kind of build. Uh, Incinerator is only good against creature decks. It's not particularly good against control decks. It's not good against a nauseam. So we ran into two matchups where Incinerator is pretty bad. And... Um, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, I just want to thank everybody for hanging out tonight. Uh, going to be calling it a wrap here. See if there's anybody on worth hosting in the magic community. Uh, magic community. Oh, uh, no, not echoes. I hate echoes. Is there anybody playing modern? Pioneer. Uh, standard. Uh, looks like they're playing modern, but they're in Spanish. Uh, da, 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 da. Wow, there's really not a whole lot going on tonight. So I guess we'll drop you in on Zanman, who's streaming pi uh, Pioneer. He's playing some five-color Niv, it looks like. So thank everybody for just hanging out. It's been greatly appreciated. And go ahead and rate him.